Okay, now is the fun stuff. We are going to go away on our own in our uh, office, and we are going to create the look of this project in our head. We're going to look at some of the reference images that the director has sent through. If you've got your own reference library, you're going to go through some of those and see if you can't find something that feels uh, like the project that you're looking for, whether it's framing, it's color, it's lighting, it's composition, it's camera movement, all of those things. Now is the time. If we had, if money was no object, time was no object, what would we make this thing look like? So for our purposes here, uh, I'd like to start with the treatment. That's where we're going to spend most of our time trying to dwindle, dwindle down what it is that we are going for. What is the look that we can achieve? And then we'll get into some of the necessary components to achieve that look and whether or not we can pull that into the text gal. So if we look, you know, again, this is just something that I would very, very quickly do. I probably wouldn't sit here with a pen and draw it out. I wouldn't even send uh, reference images through to the director. Maybe if it's a new director or if it's a very specific style, I would do that. But as of late, I've been getting away from sending references to directors. It's more you get hired to do the job of the visuals as long as you're confident in the visuals and you can communicate that uh, clearly to the director and they know what they're getting, they know what they're in for and they're happy with that, then that's fair enough, right? So in the real world, I wouldn't sit here and, and do this whole process with crossing things out and uh, honing the look that way. I would just do it in my head uh, very, very quickly. Or if I needed some more study, I would try and find some some newer references or some newer ideas if, if I was in a situation I hadn't been in before. So if we jump in here to the treatment, uh, first things like this, okay, it's good I would say I would just basically go through every image and see what I like in them and see if I can incorporate some of the things I like that the director also likes because this is in the treatment and see if I can't uh, marry those up and try and bring them into the look that we're going to be creating. So this is, I, I like this. We're, we're never going to be inside the car though. So, so the framing and things like that uh, doesn't really play. This is also probably too late in the afternoon for us. So as a, like a hero still, this is probably a no from me. But I mean, it's, uh, it's obviously a beautiful looking shot. This one, I like the angle of the cars relative to the sun. So maybe for car positioning, this could be one. But then I would go through and say, okay, well, we're not going to have any of this stuff backlit back here. I like the composition on the road, right, with a little tiny bit of road in here. And then you got a nice darkened down road, cars facing this way, edge lights here. This is something that we could work with, right? I would remember this one. Also, the density, it feels a little bit saturated for what we're going for. I would want to desaturate things. But again, might be saving that one. Just take it into Photoshop, desaturate a little bit, and maybe use that to pass on to the crew. Really, because this is also an exercise. If you're working with new crew or if there's something very specific that you're going to want to pass this stuff on. Be like, well, this is the look or this is the idea. And usually the more specific you can be, the less general, the, the more um, constructive these can actually, or more additive these can actually be to the finished product. Getting crew on board with very specific things. Like if you really wanted uh, in all of your shots to have lots and lots of layers, you send this through and you say, I like the layers, right? Don't listen, don't look at anything else because people get easily distracted. This is what we're trying to do on set. So let's get some of this. If this is the art department that you're talking to, it's like, well, let's have items on set that we can do this with, right? We want to really block up the frame. And I want lots of different little art elements in here. Maybe we want something else over here that you could uh, come up with. These are ideas that you would just be flowing through your mind as you're sitting here because right now the sky is the limit, right? We're not on the day. No one is, we're not uh, costing the production money with 30 people sitting on their hands while we come up with these ideas. We're doing it all in our own time and just to make us better and to make us more efficient. This one I like. This time of day, I like the shadows in the background. I don't like how side lit it is, right? I would probably go more backlight here. But I like, again, I like this little thing in the front here. Uh, I like the aspect along the road where we can sort of see into the distance and it just sort of falls off. And then of course they've got power lines like we have, well, we don't have power lines, we've got light poles. But I like those poles in the shot as well, again, just to, just to add some depth, right? Even back here, it's just a little point of interest. So I would be thinking, well, this is a good one for overall saturation as well. I'm not so sure about the color. It's a little bit too desaturated in gray and blue. Uh, so I probably wouldn't lean this way for color, but I like certain things in the elements. So I'd say this is a keeper. Uh, this one here, just not even a starter, right? It's way too moody. Uh, we don't have any snow in Australia, at least where we are. So that's not gonna happen. Uh, this one, I like the density and I like the color. I would probably be saying this is the sort of saturation that we're looking for and the color. It feels realistic, doesn't feel over the top, uh, but there's still some harshness here. And it's that harshness that we're going to we're gonna sort of embrace. We're going to embrace it in the wide shots. And then when we go in for the close up, we're going to try and clean things up a little bit more than that. But I like that color. So that would also be a keeper. Here, I'd say this is just a little bit too overcast. And, or a little bit too soft, like there's not much that difference 
between the background levels here and then her face, right? This is all done through Neg here. You can feel the darkness that is happening over here. And then there's a little tiny leak of light this way. But really, this is, looks like just softened off sky uh, on an overcast day, right? There's not too much difference between the background values and the key value. But I like the softness. I also like the distance, right? Like this feels like a good close up, uh, especially in the 2 4 0 aspect ratio. This feels like where we want to be for the focal length. So maybe I add that to the focal length pile. In here, again, a little bit too sunsetty, a little bit too flary. We're not going, really going for flares. I like the feeling of the sun in this one, right? So I know that this is diffused sun. I know there's some neg in here, and I know there's a little tiny leak on this side. So this is probably what we are going for, right? Something like this for our close up look. And then we're going to try and match it to something a little bit more harsh in the wide shots. This one, you can just cross off to desaturated, uh, to bleak. This one is probably, oops, big pen. This one is probably the harshness, you know, probably the harshness in the wider shots. And then we'll go ahead and clean it up. But even here, I'd probably be saying, well, let's add just a little bit more wrap, just a little bit something to it. But again, the angle to the car is nice in the background. Uh, having two people in the shot, that's something to think about, but I probably wouldn't keep that one either. This one, a little bit too overcasty, not quite in our world. This is too dark. I like the look of this one. This one's too flat. I like this one, but this is probably a little bit too sun sandwichy, right? You got angle here and angle here and probably too crunchy for the world that we're gonna be living in. I would probably wanna just open up those shadows just a little bit, maybe add shadow down here, wrap this way. I mean, beautiful looking image, just a different style than what we're going for. Sun is in sort of the perfect place, but for our purposes, I would say just a little bit too crunchy. In here, you know, way too much saturation for our look, but I like the level of highlights versus the level of shadow, right? It doesn't feel like you're underneath a tree, but it feels like it's a sunny day. Uh, here again, we're not gonna really be that, we don't wanna be up and looking down. We want to be ground level. We wanna be telling the story at the level of the car, right, in with these people. We don't really wanna be up high seeing anybody approaching or anything like that. The landscape is nice, but it's not super vast where we, we need something to take advantage of it. Uh, here, a little bit too much darkness in the frame, too crunch, you know, the, the color's okay, but probably too saturated, right? We wanna pull that down. This is probably the closest, right? Because it matches the environment that we're gonna be in, but this level of harshness on the sun and at times this level of backlight, right? Where you really only get the top of the car with light coming on it. Everything else is in backlight. And you know, it's that little tiny difference. You know, it's like a stop and a half between what's there and what's here. Just filling it in, opening it up, making it easy. Here, a little bit too gray, slash a little bit too green and too much grain. This is probably too close for our purposes. A uh, little bit of funky, like I like that there's something in the foreground here, but it doesn't really match up with our vibe, so I wouldn't really use it. And then we're back here, which is again, this is now probably the angle and the depth of field that we would end up having very, very shallow on the close-ups. All I would say is we'll probably just end up opening things up a little bit more. Just get a little bit more, like it's this key that's up here, if we go normal size pen, this key that is up here coming from the sun, I would just wanna take it around a little bit more, take it around a little bit more this way um, and just even it out. Because right now you've got hot high and then you've got all this keyed in area then you've got the super darkness. I'd probably say soften this off a little bit more to make it a little bit more even and then more direction out of the bounce. So rather than having it all the way across the face, look to just get the triangle here and then open up these shadows and maybe extend this around. So this is a good one for framing for those close-ups. For mood, I would just say open it up a little bit. But really, if we're just looking at the treatment images, we're going through references, you'd be doing the same thing with whatever reference catalog you have or library. You're just filtering down the images. Like what's the best way? Which, where do we go next? And it's just very, very quickly doing it, right? You're not gonna draw on these images. You're not gonna save them into a folder unless you really have to. It's just you're looking for ideas. You're looking for them as fast as you can because you wanna cycle through all of the possible options, right? You're curating the look by seeing all these images. You're just looking for ideas. Darkness, no, don't want it. Overcast, don't want it. Backlight, okay, I like it. Softened off sun, even better. This one's too overcast, right? You're just cycling through the options. And then you know, now we know, okay, we want sunny, 
We want a little bit of a softened off sun, nice little wrap around the edges. We're gonna want neg, so we're gonna bring in lots and lots of neg out there, even though we're out there in the middle of the day and there'll be lots of crunch. We wanna balance that crunch. We don't want any fill coming up from the ground or anything like that, so I know neg is on the cards. Also with our schedule, I know that we're gonna have to use some overheads. We're gonna have to use some diffusion. That's gonna eat up time, just something to be aware of. So this is just a process of going through, finding the looks very, very quickly skimming through. What do you like? Do you like focal length? Do you like color? Do you like light? Do you like composition or movement? Those are usually the five that I will go through and stick to. And then I'll, I'll in my head, I will sort of group them together. Oh, I really like these focal lengths. I like these focal lengths for these moments. Uh, I like this composition. In the wide shots, I like something in the frame. I don't like something in the frame. I like how there's depth. I like how it's flat. The lighting, I like it harsh in the wides. I like it slightly softer in the close-ups. Uh, the color, right? Like which way are we gonna go with the color? Those are usually the main ones that I stick to and then I will categorize things inside my head. I'm like, okay, I need a look for this, got it. I need the focal length. What are we gonna do here for focal length? This. Now I take all of that information and then once you'll, you'll see, once we get to the tech scout and we actually have a couple stand-ins, whether it's the first AD or the producer or the, the uh, PA, whoever it is that's gonna stand in, we'll, I'll just cycle through the focal lengths inside of Artemis. I'll just cycle through throwing different things inside the frame inside of Artemis because we're still at that stage. We're still curating ideas, right? We're not really curating the image, just ideas of what is going to make it up. And if we think about those five categories, those are all the five categories that we then have to curate, right? Everyone is going to be separate. Focal length going to be different, much different than the lighting. And you take all of those ideas in your head, you come up with a plan, and then that's what you're expressing in the tech scout to the team. You're saying, okay, I like this lens standing right here because the more information you can provide to the team, the better the efficiency is going to be on set. Now, every job is different. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to be that specific, but the more specific you can be, the more choices you can make beforehand, the more the team is gonna get out of it, which in turn makes the shoot more efficient, which in turn allows you to be more creative on set on the day. Once you see it and you see the talent there in the close-up, maybe you thought, oh, the 50 is the way to go, but maybe you see it and you're just like, wow, it feels like, Judging from the last shot, it feels like if you were just a lens up and just took a step back, it would be that much more impactful. So that's how you get those little opportunities on set. And that's how you set yourself up to get the best possible results.